Oh boy, <laughs> that's a really tough question. Uh, it's it's kind of like asking, uh, what are the what are the five countries you should know about if you're not interested in geology or uh, ge geography or, or politics? Um, and the answer varies depending on what your actual interests are, or what what are the five companies you should know. Uh, but um, and and the answer changes over time too. Um, uh, back when I was getting started, low these many decades ago, uh, the answers would have been Fortran, COBOL, BASIC, um, LISP, and maybe APL. Uh, and uh, those were very formative languages back then, and people learned a lot from those. But these days, uh, it might be more important for you to know uh, JavaScript, even if um, uh, the only reason you know that is, is that you know whether or not to click the uh, Enable JavaScript button in your browser. Um, but JavaScript is a, a nice, uh, lightweight, object-oriented language. Um, and uh, that's why it can fit in a browser uh, and uh, do these things such as uh, uh, run little programs that, uh, that uh, help you input your data and then send it off to a web server somewhere. Um, there are, there are heavier weight uh, uh, object-oriented languages. Um, and uh, you know the elephant in the room is sort of Java. You can't really make a, a list of modern languages without talking about it. Java is sort of the, uh, the COBOL of the uh, 21st century, I think. Um, it's uh, uh, kind of heavyweight, uh, verbose, and uh, everyone loves to hate it, um, though not everyone will admit that. Uh, uh, but managers kind of like it uh, because um, it looks like you're getting a lot done. Um, you know, if, if 100 lines of Java code uh, accomplish a task, then, then it looks like you've written 100 lines, even though in a different language it might only take uh, uh, five lines. You know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, you can eat a, a one-pound steak uh, or you can eat, a, you know, 100 pounds of shoe leather and you feel a greater sense of accomplishment after the shoe leather, but, you know, maybe there's some downsides. Um, but it also, um, because it is sort of considered an industrial language and programmers are sort of interchangeable um, parts, uh, managers like it for that reason, and for that reason, a lot of Java jobs have been uh, outsourced uh, from the United States. Um, oh, what other languages? Um, I think uh, going in a different direction, coming more from academia, we have a language like uh, Haskell, which uh, we call a functional programming language. Uh, that means function in a mathematical sense, uh, not in the, in the sense that other languages are, other languages are dysfunctional. Uh, but a function mathematically has an input and an output, and it um, maps to, uh, uh, you know, w with a, a great deal of uh, mathematical certainty, what those what those are. So, um, uh, it uh, Haskell is one of those languages that uh, mathematician type minded people love. It's it's sort of a language for geniuses by geniuses. Um, so. Uh, you should probably know about it, uh, if only to be able to say, well, is, is this kind of like Haskell? And if so, then you know you have to hire some really part, smart people to, uh, to program in it. Uh, Haskell is sort of a, a modern kind of lisp in that sense. Um, what else? Uh, well, we can't, we can't leave off modern languages without uh, uh, talking about C. The C language, that's just spelled with the letter C, um, is actually about 40 years old, but um, people have tried to replace C with other languages that are, are like it and have by and large not succeeded because uh, uh, C is a very minimalistic language and very close to the metal, as we say, on a, on a machine and lets you get down and, and do very fine-grained stuff very efficiently, but it's a lot of hard work. Uh, but once you've done that work, it, you can run it pretty much everywhere. So almost all the other languages that you see, uh, Java, Perl, whatever, uh, actually, if you look down underneath, they're actually implemented in C or, or in a closely related language. So um, uh, that, that continues to be a very fundamental language, if only because everyone is trying to reinvent it and uh, not succeeding in doing so. 
And finally, um, for a fifth language, uh, well, you'd probably want to pick one of the scripting languages. Um, there's there's uh, several to choose from. Uh, there's Python, there's Ruby, but of course I am uh, prejudiced in favor of Perl uh, because I think it has the, um, the liveliest community um, and because uh, we uh, have intentionally been uh, redesigning it lately to leapfrog uh, all the uh, other languages. Uh, for, the, for the last number of years, we've been uh, redesigning it to take out all the warts that uh, we've noticed over time. And we figured it was just our, our one chance to um, uh, break backward compatibility, break the things that need breaking, keep all the things that make Perl, Perl, keep it a, a joy to use. Um, and with this redesign, uh, make it a language that uh, will be able to uh, be useful and enjoyable for decades. Um, and so uh, I, I'd recommend Perl, but uh, I'm known to be prejudiced in the matter. Mm -hmm.